Well, praise God, praise God, you lovely people on YouTube and on Facebook and to the whole wide world. Blessings to you in this great year, 2023. We just got through done with 2022, and I know a lot of people is bringing back 22 in their 23, and you can't do that. If you do that, then you're going to be having extra luggage on top of 2023. Come on. If he wasn't doing it, if she wasn't doing it, if the job wasn't working, if your business was failing, then you have to go into 23 with a new look on life. What you going to do different? What you going to make different? Who you going to add to your business? Who you going to get rid of in your business? There's decisions that you got to make all through 2023. You can't wait till 24 to make a resolution. You need to make one right today. And number one, you need to make it is giving your life to Christ. And I know I sound like some old fogies, some old church pastors, blah, blah, blah. But I've been on the streets. I've been there before. I've been where you are, drinking, clubbing, twerking, lying, backbiting, stealing out of Walmart, writing bad checks. Come on, changing price tags, stealing. Come on, I've been there, seen that, and done it. And through the grace of God, when I changed my life and told God out of my mouth through uh, uh, crying tears of blood, come on, somebody, and tired of me just looking the way I was, I was a mess on top of a mess. Come on. Anytime you look in the mirror, and this is a dangerous thing, what I'm getting ready to say. Anytime you look at the mirror and you don't know your inner being, don't know who you are, because Satan have your face disfigured, you be... You looking all like that, and you can't understand, but you have a straight face, but to yourself, you looking like that, because that demon have got into your spirit. Come on, I'm preaching good right now. It have got in your spirit, and you don't even know who you are no more. You've been in such a abusive relationship, you don't know how to laugh and have joy no more. You think every man is supposed to do you like that. You are locked into something that is so dangerous that... My God, only the grace of God can get you out of that. And we have to understand that God is still some, doing something in 2023. Going to be different. God is a changing God. He going to win. I'm going to tell you, I don't care who you are or what your opinion is about God. Or Genesis to Revelation, you have to eat the whole Bible. And the problem with us as people, we get too opinionated. It's a scripture we talked about yesterday. They quit complaining, moaning and complaining, uh, always mumbling, uh, ask for a job, pray for the job, pray for the house, pray for the husband. Now you got all that and you don't want none of it. Don't know how to treat what God have gave you uh, the best it could be. And you can't understand why you're struggling because you're just, you, you don't know what you want, if that makes sense. And then we blame God because our mistakes that we make. But the choices that you make is your choices. And you have to make good choices in life. And then you have to know where you are with God and have a relationship. One thing I love about this uh, in 2 Kings chapter 20, you can read it for yourself, is when Hezekiah, God granted him 15 more years to live. Why? Because God had heard his voice before. Because if God ain't never heard you, when you crying out because you lost your mama, you lost your daddy, your child, or yourself is in trouble. You got one diagnosed from the doctor. And when the doctor diagnosed you with something like cancer or a diabetic or something really bad, they give you three to six months to live. Come on. God don't care about that number that they give. God have a number for you, and you have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, God himself, so when you usher up a prayer, that your background, see, no, more, normally when you go for a job and that job want to resume, it need to, you need to put down, number one, your name, social security, number, blah, 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 all that stuff. Then you have to put down the recent jobs you had, the most three recent jobs you had. Uh, what is your background? What you do like? Your resume tells about you. Come on. If, if you have nothing but your name on there when I submit my resume to this company, what do you think that company going to do? They're going to like, who is this? They don't have nothing down. What have they done? Come on. When have they done this job before? I see nothing on the resume. That's what God is going to do with us, Jesus Christ. 
he's going to look at your resume and see what you got down. Come on. Were you fluent in your job? Were you on work? Were you on time at your job? Come on. Did you love the people in your job? This is your resume for Jesus Christ, God himself. Not your attendance was good at church, but you never changed. You still cussed. You still club. You still drank like a fish. You didn't like nobody. Can't stand your family members. Don't get along with your husband. Don't like your wife. Don't like your wife's people. Don't like your husband's people. Come on. We have to get to a point where you are a Christian. You bought and sold out for Jesus Christ to make all that right. And I'm telling my church, get your living room straight. You can't see God's face if your own living room is a mess. How are you going to church and, and figuring you a holy roly, but your living room is messed up? You have to fix your living room so your living room will be right, if that makes any, any sense. Let's take a break. I'm going to call this Real Tuesday today. Because one thing I found about life, I love this little cup. My church members gave me that. I love them. We take care of each other. And that's what a pastor's job is, too. It ain't about me having no steak and my, my church having baloney. Mm -mm. If I'm rolling with steak, y'all are, too. Come on. If we eat baloney, I'm going to bring the crackers. Come on. That's the way we roll at One Lord, One Spirit Outreach. I am for you. You are for me. One don't fall without the other. We are one body. That's what we have to teach in the church. Ain't no cliques. Come on. And you have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, God himself. You have to pray. And if I ask three about three things, what have you guys prayed together, you and your wife? I say it all the time. When you grabbed each other and put in the living room, each other and said, looked each other in the eyes and said, you know what? I love you. You looked her in the eyes and said, I love you too. Come on. Kiss the children. Kiss your brother. Kiss your sister. Because it ain't guaranteed we're going to see each other. I just had a best friend just leave. Just today. I got the phone call today. Come on. That they found their husband dead. Come on. So we have to be so careful, people. This We don't know the time or the season. So in 2 King chapter 20, it starts off and says, Go back and tell Hezekiah. Hezekiah had been a king uh, and you have to read the whole story I don't have enough time to go through all of it but I'm going to pick out the juicy part about God wants to hear you he want to hear your prayer people come on you got children you got to have a prayer life you, them children are going to catch cold they're going to catch fevers they're teething come on you're a single mom you ain't never had no children before yellow jaundice all of that stuff you got to be ahead of that stuff put your prayer up to Jesus Christ, God himself. Hezekiah was a praying man. He had been praying to God. He's a little scary when I read the, the Bible about him. He got a little afraid when this king was getting ready to attack him. And God came and told him, don't worry about them. I'm going to kill all of them. And God kills thousands of them at night. When the, the captain woke up, all his men was laying out dead. Don't play with God, people. God will tear you up. All the stuff that you got, all the stuff you got accumulated. God hit you with something, a diagnosis that come in your body, and he will have you cry out to him. Because he said, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. I ain't tripping. I'm just telling you, if it work, work it. If it don't work, don't play with it. Jesus Christ, God himself, works. I'm here to tell you it works. It says, go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, this is what the Lord, the God of the Father, David, said, and I have heard, watch this, I have heard your prayers. Come on, let that soak in a minute. Heard who prays? The pastor's prayer? You don't pray. You got to pray out loud, too. You got to pray in front of people. If you're a Christian, you got to learn how to pray in front of people. So if you're a Christian and you go into church and your, your job decided to do a dinner. Everybody bring in a little potluck, bring in a dish. And they ask you, since they know you go to church, to pray. I tell my church all the time, you better be ready because the devil will come and he'll bring that to you. Come on. The Bible said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you when I face my father about you. 
Let me read this. It said, go back and tell Hezekiah, the leader of my people, this is what the Lord thy God of, of the father David said. I have heard your prayer and I've seen your tears. My God, you got to cry in front of Jesus Christ. Man, woman, child, come on. I will heal you on the third day from now. Three days from now, you'll be healed. You will go up to the temple of the Lord and I will add mm, 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 15 years to your life. Come on. You got to ask him. I went in for a physical yesterday. They messed up when they gave me insurance. They gave me insurance. I, you know, I'm at an age now. They gave me insurance. I went there and had them check me from the Rudy to the Tootie. My God, they read, they checked me from the Rudy to the Tootie. My Tootie was good. I said, look at here, God. My God, I get excited of when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ and you could pray up to the heavens. You can feel your help coming. My God, that job may be looking like it's uh, getting a little funky. And you ask God for that job. You just pray up to the heavens of God. Your husband may be clowning. Your wife didn't come home. Your children getting bad grades. One of them is in jail. My God, you got to pray up to the heavens of God and say, Lord, my God, if you can do it, my God, I know you can do it. God, I grant you that you're going to take care of my life, if that makes any sense. I'm getting excited now. I'm getting excited. My feet moving right now. My God, if you usher up a prayer and have a relationship with Jesus Christ, he may grant you 15 more years. When I read that about six, seven years ago, I've been asking God from the date that you know that you're going to let me go from this earth. Lord, grant me 15 more years. I'll take that 15, and I advise you to take that 15 and change your life and get a prayer life prayer life with Jesus Christ and repent daily of your sins because you know what you're doing. Come on, if that makes any sense. Well, this is Real Tuesday today. We're just kicking it real, and that's the way we do. So you guys be blessed on this Real Tuesday. I'll talk to you and see you later. Remember, go to the store, back home. Go to the grocery store, back home. Come on, this is not no time for no out there running around in no club. This is the time to get a relationship with Jesus Christ and God himself and get close to God so he can get closer to you. I love you all. Be blessed. God bless.